um, where SGLT1 is a glucose transporter that will move glucose from the guts into the bloodstream. SGLT2 is a transporter that will move the glucose from the kidneys back into the blood. The kidneys will pull the glucose in, and then SGLT2 will put it all back into the bloodstream. These drugs, as the name suggests, block that effect. It closes down those transporters. Uh, and that's, if we are only looking at glucose, it works. If you can block the glucose from coming in, or push the glucose out through the kidneys into the urine, you will lower glucose. That will lower insulin. And so if we just stopped there, we would say, well, gosh, this works. Let's just keep writing these prescriptions all day. However, there are consequences. There's something within physics called an osmotic gradient. But where there is a lot of glucose, water wants to follow. This is why in diabetes the person's urinating so much, because the glucose that's getting filtered into the kidneys is overwhelming the kidney's ability to pull it back in. And so we have a lot of glucose that stays in the urine. Well, where there's a lot of glucose, there's a lot of water. And so there ends up being a lot of urine volume produced. But there are consequences. If you block the intestine's ability to pull glucose in, you keep a lot of water in the guts as well. And now anytime the person thinks they're going to politely pass gas, they don't know what's going to come out. And uh, it's, you know, they're socially always on edge. Also, less um, maybe socially complicated, but perhaps even a little more pathogenic, is that the fact that you are basically creating a diabetes in the form of the polyuria, the ex excess urine production. And little bacteria eat one thing. They eat glucose. And the urinary tract is constantly being invaded by bacteria. Bacteria constantly trying to come up the urinary tract. Well, if we are flushing the urinary tract with all the glucose that we're eating by dumping it into the kidneys, it's like aid stations on the bacteria's marathon to our bladder and then to our kidneys. We're basically saying, hey, bacteria, you look like you're getting tired. Here is some energy drink for you. Why don't, and keep going. And so it's no surprise that UTIs that urinary tract infections are so much more common. We are feeding the little beasties, helping them invade our body. But in this paradigm, if we are willing to block someone's glucose absorption and give them catastrophic diarrhea, socially speaking, or we are willing to block the kidney's ability and we're pushing it out, forcing it out through the urinary tract, I submit that there's like a little shoulder angel sitting on someone's side, ask, whispering, Maybe just give them less glucose. Maybe tell them to eat less glucose. If we're willing to block it from coming in or forcing it out, just put less in the system in the first place. And then you've undone the necessity or the benefit of this drug class. Now, lastly, I leave the worst for last. <clears throat> Sulfonylureas and insulin, of course, various trade names. But the actions collectively of these will be to increase the insulin. Sulfonylureas, you take the pill and it'll basically force the beta cells to dump more insulin into the system. Then the insulin injection itself, of course, is going to increase insulin.